Europe still in the hot seat after failing to come up with any real results in its summit last week. They did agree to tighten up their belts, but Moody says these efforts won't cut it when it comes to the immediate crisis at hand. Time to let the Willis watchdogs out. Al Lewis is a columnist for Dow Jones Newswires in Denver. Marjorie Clifton is the principal of Clifton Consulting in D.C. And George Jarkissi is the chairman of the National Eagles and Angels Association in Houston. Welcome to all of you. Al, let's start with you. What do you make of the story? Well, I think this European debt crisis is great. I mean, we always have something to talk about. Oh, look, the crisis is solved. Market 300 points up. Oh, look, it's not solved. Market 300 points down. This is going on and on. Look, I got my first gray hairs right here on my chin We're talking about this story. And I have a feeling I'm going to die in this chair talking about this story. Well, Marjorie, though, it could get worse from here. I mean, you know, the euro could blow up. Uh, our economy could go into yet another major, major recession if they can't pull it out. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, I think the major fear is this good on American soil. It's awfully reminiscent of a lot of the things that we're dealing with right now. And in this case, we have 27 countries trying to come to the table to make a decision on cutting budgets, where in our case, we have 535 members of Congress who can't seem to come to a decision about any kind of cost cutting. The only thing they've agreed on as of late is the fact that pizza is a vegetable. So it's not looking good. Well, you know, 26 countries, though, talking about cutting. Uh, George, I, they haven't really done it yet now, have they? We're still waiting. No, they haven't cut yet. And, uh, you know, I think the important thing here is America needs to look at what's going on in Europe, make some decisions that we don't want to be there, and we've got to get serious about cutting our government spending, which has gone wild. Since the 60s, uh, government spending has been up 500 percent, and yet the population only grew 50 percent. And so this is a good way for us to say we don't want to be there and uh, for us to avoid it. Well, let's face it, you know, spending is completely unconnected to how much money uh, uh, we pull in and rev tax revenues. I could just really wind up. But actually, let's talk about money, but in a different way. How much do you have to make before you consider yourself rich? According to the latest Gallup poll, the majority of Americans are setting their standards at just $150,000 a year. Now, Marjorie, in some parts of the country, that is a small fortune. In others, it's not. What do you make of it? Yeah, especially being in Washington, D.C., I can tell you that, that, that um, it, it's, it's very interesting. Um, you know, it's, what's interesting is that Washington actually counts the, the level of wealthy at a lot higher rate than the average American perceives it. And right now, why the conversation is happening is all about uh, the, the, the payroll tax and at what rate are we going to tax the rich. And so, you know, by the Obama administration Here standards, back, we're actually talking about taxing the super rich because they're talking at those earning about a million dollars. And the Gallup poll showed that it. only 15 percent of Americans perceive rich as being a uh, million dollar income. So, you know, it's, it's all about, again, as you said, the, the location and the time and, and, and who you are in, in that place. George, what do you say? Well, my, my, my thoughts on this is it's interesting to me how the American people knew uh, about inflation. So what the number they gave before uh, versus the number they've given now has almost perfectly hit inflation. So American people are very in tune with uh, how much they're making and how much that's worth and what they need to be comfortable uh, 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 to be considered wealthy. Well, Al, do you need 150000 Do you need 300000 450000 I mean, what's your number, mister? You know what? I looked at this survey. They, they went after 1,012 people, and every single one of those persons got the answer to the question wrong. The answer, no matter where you are on the socioeconomic strata, is more. You just need more, Jerry. You never are going to feel rich in this country. And also, I think this shows how out of touch people are about what's rich and what isn't rich. I mean, household income, uh, me medium household income in this country is $52,000 a year. So, of course, $150,000 sounds rich. But, I mean, if you really want to go after the rich and raise taxes on the rich, you're not going to do it with income taxes. You've got to go after the capital gains tax. And I don't hear very many people talking about that. Well, it doesn't help growth. That's why. Uh, let's move on to, I can't believe this story. Lowe's has people up in arms, the store, after pulling its ads from running on the TLC show, All American Muslim. Now, Lowe's said it backed away after a significant amount of criticism, calling the program a lightning rod for strong political and social views. Al, we've got the video up and running. You've probably seen it today. Uh, what do you make of this story? And, and, and are you shocked or, or what do you think of this? 
You know what? Lowe's already had their ads there, so why pull them? All they're doing now is creating more controversy because they're caving into the pressure. You know, frankly, I think it's a sad state of affairs when we can boycott whatever show we don't like. You know what I don't like? I don't like Jersey Shore. You know who's <laughs> against my religion? <laughs> Snooky. I want, I want to boycott any uh -huh. company that advertises Snooky. Well, Marjorie, do you agree or do you think that uh, it's problematic for a major retailer to advertise on this show? Well, no, I mean, I think Lowe's had an opportunity to take a stand for tolerance in this country or to pander to the haters, and they pandered. And I think that, you know, I love, there, there's groups already, and they better just buckle up, because there's groups already organizing on Twitter and other places to speak out against Lowe's. I love that uh, Cal Penn, the actor, came out and said, we're going to make our next movie, Harold and Kumar don't go to Lowe's. So from a marketing standpoint as well, I don't think they've done themselves any favors. Well, fascinating story and uh, uh, amazing to see the reaction going on out there. Al, Marjorie, and George, thanks for helping us out tonight. Great Thank to you. have you on the show. Thanks. Thank you. All right.